We are arriving to the last speaker of this morning's session, who is busily discussing and negotiating a few minutes extra time with the moderator, it seems. I was saying that you're busily negotiating a few minutes of extra time. <laughs> And that speaker is Ron Apple from the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics and the University of Geneva, Switzerland. Ron heads the Proteum Informatic Groups, known as PIG of the SIB. He is responsible, and a lot of you know him, for the development of Melanie, the most widely used 2D gel analysis program. He was the originator and then co developer of the Expasi web server, co-founder of GeneBio, of GeneFraud, the SIB, and of Health on the Net. As geographical links, Alfred Bien, who was born and did his uh, first uh, studies, and he studied in the University of Geneva, but he did his postdoc in Boston, and went back to Geneva where he's since. As biolinks, I've put Mathieu Funk, with whom he worked for a number of years developing Melanie, Danny Ostrasser, who has worked, so have both worked together for more than 20 years, if I'm right. And uh, Christian Pellegrini, Ernest Weitman, Victor Yonganil, Manuel Petsch, and all of the PIG and Swiss Prod group at SIB. You can see that he looks far away in the distance in what is the future of things. <laughs> he can look mischievous. Relaxed. A long time ago, he could grimace. He can <laughs> change a lot. But the most important thing is I've been privileged to sing the same partition with him for more than 17 years and to count him as a friend for those 17 years. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Thank you, Amos. Well, I hesitated quite some time uh, on what I should talk about. At first, I thought I should do a historical talk about the uh, collaboration and relationship between PIG and SwissProt in the last 20 years. Then I thought maybe I'd do a talk on AMOS. But finally, as I realized this is a scientific meeting, I decided to do a scientific uh, presentation. So I'm going to talk about uh, our group, the Proteome Informatics Group, PIG Group's activities and highlight the many links to SwissProt. Uh, nevertheless, because this is a, a special occasion, I wanted to associate all um, the members of the group as co-authors, including the members of the administration and the syst systems engineers. Uh, also, a small comment. I noticed when I was sitting in the back of the room that you cannot see the bottom one third of the of the image of the screen. And we have the title at the top and the important information at the bottom. So I decided to put the titles in the remaining part of my talk at the bottom. And so I, I swapped everything for the <laughs> remaining part of, of the talk. Um, so first of all, this. Here I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, some people and the fact that we are in uh, Brazil. So, e primero lugar, eu gostaria de felicitar ao Amos, ao Rolf e ao todo grupo Swissprot pelo belo trabalho que eles vem realizando nestes últimos 20 anos. Gostaria também de agradecer aos principais organizadores deste magnífico congresso e particular Tania e Amos. I would I would also like to, to thank uh, Lydie Bougelre, whom you never see. She's always somewhere hidden, but she did a lot of work for this, um, for this conference. So this is. <laughs> 
this is the outline of my talks. The first two points will be done in one slide, short introduction on proteome informatics uh, and my group, and then describe our activities and the links uh, with SwissPort. At the end, I will talk about, show you some examples of collaborations we have with SwissPort. Uh, so this is uh, the typical proteomics workflow. Very quickly, as many of you know, you start with some sample, then there is sample preparation, there is some kind of separations, typically 2D gels or uh, LCMS, mass, mass spectrometry, and this is what we call wet lab. Then there is a bioinformatics part where we take the results of this separation and analyze them by computer. Then there is a mass spectrometry part again where we analyze with mass spectrometry, mass spectrometry the results the selected data from bioinformatics part, and again a bioinformatics part where we try to identify and characterize the proteins selected in the previous parts. And then at the end there is database that we update with the results, but we also use to search our data. So this is the name of my group, Proteome Informatics Group, most, most better known as PIG. And Small comment before I start. We, we have been working, collaborating with SwissPort for nearly 20 years. Not completely 20 years, but nearly 20 years. I can tell you, it was often very nice, but many times really stressful. So we now really deserve some rest. So this, again, is the proteomics workflow. I will very quickly go through the various parts. First, there is protein separation. Uh, for many years, the main separation technique was 2D gels, where you separate proteins according to their uh, isoelectric point, so molecular charge and mole uh, isoelectric charge and molecular weight. And then this is the image you get. Each spot is a different protein, and you can analyze that. Uh, now, more and more, you have LCMS, liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. The principle is that by LC, you separate uh, proteins according to some of their properties, such as hydrophobicity. Then at each time interval, you send that to the mass spectrometry. Uh, often you digest proteins before, so you get, for each time interval, you get uh, one mass spectrum, where each peak is the mass, uh, so gives you the exact mass of the, each component, typically of peptides. And then you can select one or more of these peaks and do a second fragmentation of the peptides and from which you can get uh, sequence information that you can then match to the database to identify your uh, peptide or protein. Uh, second part, then we use these uh, resulting uh, data to analyze them and this is the work of my group in the last 20 years. We developed proto imaging uh, software and basically two for the last 20 years we worked on 2D gel analysis software, and uh, Nasri discussed that already two days ago, so I don't have to do it uh, again. Just one small detail. Uh, you can see that the maps are annotated in Melanie in the software, and of course, these annotations allow you to go directly to SwissPort through the, their IDs. And now we, have, we are also developing the same kind of software to analyze images, because you can look at LCMS data because it's also two-dimensional separation. You can you look at them like um, image and analyze large population and do differential expression analysis. Next part is mass spectrometry, and then we take the, when we find, for example, some differentially expressed protein, we can take the related mass spectrometry data and try to identify the protein. How it works very quickly, usually proteins are digested uh, typically using trypsin, so you get a mixture of peptides, and this is sent to the mass spectrometer, where you get, as I said, what we call a peptide, peptide mass fingerprint. Each peak gives you the mass of a peptide, and you match that to databases to get uh, the identification. Often it's not enough, so you do second fragmentation and matching again. So for this, we are working on three packages. One is in collaboration with GeneBio, on the Phoenix software that was discussed already two days ago. Uh, just one small example on the many features of, of Phoenix. Uh, all these tools, you can specify 
the uh, given modifications that are known or expected, and the software searches for these modifications on the peptides. Here in Phoenix, even if you don't specify any modifications, Phoenix will go into the three spot entry and using the annotations be able to find some specific uh, uh, modifications. And this is unique in Phoenix. Another software we were working on is Aldente. This is for PMF, peptide mass fingerprint identification. It is available on XPASI. Of course, it uses three spot uh, annotations. Uh, important piece of, of work is the work of Patricia Hernandez for her PhD. One of the main bottlenecks in protein identification today in proteomics is that a large part of the mass spectra that are analyzed are not identified. We are not able to identify the proteins for many reasons. I don't go into details, but often because they have, the peptides have modifications that we don't know, that we don't expect. So Patricia developed a nice piece of uh, software, Popitam, that specifically searches for unknown any kind of modifications. So of course we don't use SwissProt, but maybe at some point in the future we can use that to add some PTMs, new PTMs to SwissProt. And finally, we have developed a database of 2D gels. As you can see, it has some links to SwissProt. It looks like SwissProt. And this is the starting point of the third area where we are working on, which is uh, data and knowledge integration, because we are now taking the results of the identification and we add we link that to many external data, including using text and data mining, in order to add, find additional properties of the proteins. One comment on uh, protein identification and characterization. It seems a very simple uh, process, but there are many, many uh, problems uh, in the lab. Uh, first, you start with one sample, the raw biological material. But there are different ways, different types of sample preparation, different mass spectrometry technologies, and then you use different software tools, many different tools, many different parameter settings. There are different databases. So obviously what you get are many different results. And how do you know which one is the best one? Which one tastes the best? Difficult. Sometimes even we have very strange uh, results. So <laughs> this is not a joke because this is not a joke because it, it really is a key problem in proteomics, is validation. How confident are you in your results? Uh, there are some other bottlenecks. One is what we call the 90% syndrome, which I already described because sometimes up to 90% of the mass spectra cannot be identified. Another problem is that there are so many different programs, so many different algorithms, different strategies, there are many steps uh, just like taking the database and digesting it, each software existing now available makes it in a different way, uh, different strategies. There is no standard input and output form format. Each available software has its own input format, uh, and there is no standard database. They also each use different standard database uh, formats, and there are so few validation tools. So we are now working on a new project called SwissPit, uh, which is a platform uh, which provides a unique submission interface, a web interface, where you can upload your data. Then you can choose among a number of existing software. Currently, we have four software available, Xtend and Phoenix, Popitam, and Inspect. We use one unique database format, and this will allow the user to optimize his search. He can combine the search strategies, choose which programs to, to use, in what, or, or maybe all four in what uh, and, and the workflow and, and so on. And this will allow an automated identification and characterization. It will also allow to compare the various program one with its other, so providing a, a benchmarking platform. And of course, we adhere to PSI. So there are three components. One is the web portal, then the workflow. You can choose your own workflows, and all this runs on the Swiss BioGrid which is a national effort where Novartis is implied with Manuel, the Biocentrum in Basel with Thorsten, the ETH, the SIB, Vital IT with uh, uh, Victor, and so on. And the proteomics part is a collaboration between uh, PIG, ETH, GeneBio, and Swiss BioGrid. So at the input, the user can 
has just one form where he can choose what program to use, enter the parameters only once, and then at the output, this exists already, it's working. What we are doing now is unifying the output because each of the software has its own output visualization way to look at, at, the, soft, at the results. So now a collaboration with GeneBio, we are modifying Phoenix so that whatever program you use, or you use the four, or in the future more, you can look at your, result, at your results in a unified way through the Phoenix interface. And of course, there are links to SwissProt. Now to finish uh, this uh, short talk, I would like just to mention some, give you some examples of the collaborations we have with SwissProt. Of course, one of the oldest one is that we set up together XPASI in 1993, that all of you probably know. Uh, later on, we created the SIB together, of course, with some other colleagues, as Manuel mentioned today, Manuel, Victor, and uh, Philip. We have uh, also started, uh, we have also found a new model to fund the SIB in collaboration with Gene Bio as of 1998. This is the list of all the projects, products that we are collaborating or have been collaborating with Gene Bio. We've been teaching together for nearly uh, 10 years. Now we have a master's in bioinformatics at the University of, of Geneva. Uh, we are very lucky to share office space. Uh, we participate together to important public events, and you can see here on the left a pig girl, and on the right a Swissport Swiss boy. Uh, we organize together our Christmas parties. Sometimes, sometimes we accept external people, like the SIB director. Uh, we are, I'm lucky to share uh, common speeches. You have seen that picture in a, f a few minutes ago. We organize important common workshops. And a major point also in our daily life is that Swissport and PIG share the administration. And they, we have very nice administration that often entertain us. <laughs> More important for the future of SwissProt and PIG is that we produce common babies. <laughs> and believe it or not, we have tried to integrate the two groups uh, more. And uh, two years ago, we, Amos and myself, uh, produced a, a special issue of Proteomics. For those of you who never read Proteomics, this is the editorial. It was published like this. So. This is not a joke, it was published like this. Uh, we didn't have only successes. We also had uh, failures. Uh, two, two examples that you can verify on the, on the web, also not uh, jokes, two failures of, of our joint uh, collaborations are the following. One is uh, this uh, gentleman in Ohio, he's just a banker. And uh, this was not, was not too bad. He's a professor in computer science. OK, I will finish with an important announcement, uh, announcement uh, by a famous publisher. Uh, there will be a whole new series of uh, four dummies books. And sorry, um, Cedric, you are not the only one anymore in bioinformatics. Uh, there is a, a whole new series. And the last of these is very important for <laughs> The last one is very important for Amos, I believe. But the, the, there is even one which is more important, uh, is uh, this one, uh, written by, of course, the world experts in the field. Uh, OK, you might say that now, after five days, you know everything on SwissPod, so you don't need this book. You are right. There is another book that it will be even more useful for you, is Amos for Dummies. <laughs> And as you can see, uh, it's also written by the world uh, expert in the field.
Okay, but they knew each other for a long time, not 87, as I said. Here you have the list of uh, uh, passengers on a ship in uh, August 1819, uh, which went from uh, Quebec to Montreal, and you can see that on number 58, they were there. Okay, final comment before I stop. Uh, I was, as uh, uh, Joel already said, I was very lucky to be part of uh, SwissPod's 10th anniversary um, that uh, took place in, in Jerusalem. Uh, I feel very privileged to be here at the 20th anniversary in Fortaleza. And Amos allowed me this morning to tell you that we don't have to wait for the 30th birthday. There will be a celebration for the 25th birthday in New Zealand. <laughs> okay, I will finish with acknowledgements. I want to acknowledge, uh, of course, my group. Uh, you see uh, their names uh, here, all their names. I want to specially thank uh, the five uh, pig girls that came with me here. Uh, Dolnit, Celine, Patricia, Patricia, and Claudia. And it's not just by chance that only girls came, came with me. I wanted to do the, an honor to Amos, who always tried to be surrounded with only by only women. So I took five uh, pig girls with me. And sorry, I have one more one more comment. Uh, it's a very, uh, very serious comment. Uh, Swissport is now part of Uniport, so it's at home in Georgetown, it's, it's at home in Kingston and in Geneva, but, but we should not forget that Swissport was born in Switzerland. And that's really very important, and I want briefly to celebrate, it's getting hot, isn't it? I'm, I'm getting very hot. Um, it reminds me um, the song, what was the name of the person who wrote the song on Monday? The song we heard, what it said, without, okay, without Swiss prot, you wouldn't go anywhere in your underwear. And I like that. And actually, it's so hot. It is, it is, it is so hot now that I think that's what we should do. So, and have some, so yes, to, to finish, um, we wanted with the pig girls to um, make a small uh, present to give, bring you a souvenir of Switzerland. So uh, we didn't know what to bring. And there are basically three typical things in Switzerland that we could bring. The first thing you all know is the Matterhorn. We tried, didn't succeed. Uh, but anyway, you don't need it because you already have it. Uh, the second thing that we is really typical, especially in Switzerland, and you know it already, is uh, chocolate. We decided not to bring chocolate because it's uh, too hot here. But nevertheless, as I saw two days ago, ago, ago on our national day that you liked uh, chocolate so much, finally, we decided to bring you two small uh, Toblerone, and these will be brought by the pig girls. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the pig girls. <laughs> I said there are three typical things in Switzerland. So um, the third one is our music. We love to sing yodel with our alphorn. Uh, as you can imagine, we cannot bring an alphorn here, but we can bring the yodel. So I invite you now to a world premiere. Bioinformaticians singing Swiss yodel in Brazil. Oh, <laughs> 
I, I forgot to say, they are in total nine kilos of chocolate, of Toblerone, and we'll put them at the coffee break this afternoon. <laughs>